Ooh, there we go. Possibly. Maybe. Alright. So, second time's the charm this time. Although it's not wanting to load on this end. Just waiting till I hear something on this end. How about now? There we go. Alright. So, there are the character sheets in the Unleashed box. I just hadn't looked at them yet. The character that I couldn't figure out, Lurk. Because it's these four characters. Focus. These four characters versus the Pharaoh, the pig people. Yeah, humanoid pigs. I don't know if they're were pigs per se, but we'll see what I do when we get to D&D. Whether I use their existing stats on the Iron Kingdom side as best as possible on how they'll convert over, which at a glance they look pretty comparable. Trade out Fizz for Constitution and it seems to be good to go. But yeah, uh, Lurk, 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 Lurk is a male Bogtrog Bone Grinder Mist Speaker. So it's not that he's on the side of the Pharaoh and trying to blend in with him. That may or may not be a Pharaoh skull. But he's got a lot of humanoid skulls here too. Yes. All rights belong to Privateer Press, Iron Kingdoms, etc. I'm just going to read a little bit. He joined up with Gullen and Zoka against Morg. Not to be confused with the Morg. Undead creatures from D&D. Gullen being the chief. He's the chief of some pygmy trolls that are dealing with this. Some of his warriors were kidnapped, so that's his motivation. Lurk has been hanging out with Longchops, the male Gatorman Brigand Monster Hunter with his self-modified rifle and Zoka is from the Tharn tribe where's her where's her tribe name the White Maw tribe of Tharn so she's human-ish she has a shape change ability, but I guess she doesn't turn into anything, but at transformation, she's kind of like a shifter. I could treat her as a shifter for D&D terms if I need to fully convert her over. But, like, they give you... Description, background, attitude, personal goal, the relation with the other party members. Unlikely heroes, why they're working together. The back gives you the archetype, feats, and how their fatigue and stuff works. And then the inside is the actual full size character sheet style, which is pretty awesome. I like how this one's set up. Spoken languages, Mulgore Tharn, Mulgore Trull, Religious Beliefs, Devourer Worm. So maybe part of the uh, Cult of the Dragon below, but she's, well, they, their tribe, the followers of the Devourer Worm might actually be a Cult of the Dragon below, but they're actually manifested as Druids instead of, you know, more clerical bent. I like the way their uh, stats look, like javelin, range of eight. The speed seven, physical, agility, so physical seems to be a cross between constitution and strength for here, and then intelligence covers like all of their mental stats. So it's pretty streamlined, but uh, 
Yeah, she's got her three javelins. And that's Sacral Blade. Where's that thing about her Sacral Blade? At hero level, plus two to damage from it, plus three at veteran, at epic, plus four to the Sacral Blade damage rolls. Pathfinder, so she can move through rough terrain without penalty, much like the similar ability by Druids. Uh, freedom of movement. Much like, what is it? Kila on Vox Machina Critical Realm. I don't know if the miniature also has the mandibles on this jaw. I'll have to double check when I go back and paint things. But I do like how they do their sheet, at least for these purposes. Gain a free action, free quick action to draw a javelin. That's what the quiver does for her, since it's in a nice, easy place to grab it from. Sacral blade can be empowered for blood magic spells. Tharn leathers do not inf interfere with their transformation. So I haven't looked over the stats for Morg, and I think it's Karn. Come on, worse. Lurk. Because Lurks made enemies with Nor or Kanor, depending on how their language does it. But you want to eliminate Kanor, their bone grinder. And I've thrown them all in a canoe for right now just to see how. Oops! Oh! He's all the way down here! Yay! Come back here. See how many of these miniatures can fit in the canoe. So four going down the river in the canoe. I've got other boats, but I wanted to see what the canoe would look like. If these four can fit, I might be able to fit all four of the party members in there as well from their party. Let's see, try to put the what's his name? It's nice having pre names too. So I put long chops in the middle, I guess, since it's the widest part of the canoe. That and for weight wise, you wouldn't want him at one end or the other. Chief Golan Oathbreaker. Put her at the front, kind of crammed in there, because she's likely to just jump off and run into the trees. At least three of them have the ability to... Which side did they put that ability on? Well, bog trogs kind of work like troglodytes because they have a fishy odor. So find cover for long chops. The start of combat before initiative is rolled can immediately advance up to 12 feet or 2 inches. D&D &D and a lot of other games, the 1 inch squares on your grid on your map or just 1 inch in general will be a 5 foot square. Whereas with Iron Kingdoms it seems to be a 6 foot square. I don't know why the difference but can treat it one way or the other, <laughs> as long as you're consistent. But yeah, make sure you move them 10 feet, maybe 15, depending on how you want to do that. And then do a quick action to take cover or go prone. Battle plan, take cover. Use a feet point to take cover during a surprise round before battle. Each friendly character in his command range can immediately advance up to 12 feet, perform a quick action to take cover or go prone. So technically if they're all in range, they can all use that. So 
so she doesn't seem to have it, but it mentions somewhere in here about her, well, between the four sheets, it mentions her running off into trees and then, like, delivering killing blows and stuff. Lurk has blending. Provided his body is mostly uncovered and not wearing armor, he gains boosted sneak rolls. So, yeah. They seem fun. I haven't read through the adventure yet. Haven't gotten their app yet. Privateer Press Digital on iOS and Android. Digital library of Iron Kingdom's content, including complete adventures. One of which is Bitter Medicine. So, it looks like it's going to be fun. in the last video that another module I read through seemed to more than heavily borrow from an H.P. Lovecraft story. Which is fine because I'm just going to adapt it for the world of Eberron. And it's a pretty easy switcheroo, so... Alright, so don't mess that up. Make sure I'll put it... Ah! See? Exactly what I was trying to avoid. Let's move it this way so we can have it plugged in out of the way. Be charging, be charging, be charging. ABC, always be charging. Which, depending on your device, is either really good or really bad for the battery. Let's drink some water real quick. Still not quite sure what I want to do with the uh, Reapers and stuff, so let's get some leather on the ones we did the bones on yesterday. Ooh. At least the ones that need leather. These minotaurs are naked. Naked, naked, naked. Bam, mostly seem to be leather ar wearing leather armor. Apparently whatever killed them, well, if they were zombies, I guess that would make more sense. The zombies bit right through their leather armor. They must have been, you know, really long-toothed zombies. The uh, Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse kind of tackled that issue with Grandma Goes to Bite, the one scout on the butt. And she's not wearing her dentures, so he doesn't get turned into a zombie. Like, what? I got to see that a week early at Cleveland's 12 Hours of Terror Horror Movie Marathon, which used to be like 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Now I think when pre-pandemic they changed over to 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I don't know what it's at now that we've got pandemic protocols and stuff in place, whether relaxed or enforced depending on where we're at in the spectrum of the whole diseasey, diseasey, diseasey stuff. Like shut down for, you know, a month and then everything will be fine. Nope. Can't do it. Can't put on a mask. But hey, here we are. Schnick butt leather. This one might be, uh, Junked up. Oh, well, we'll get the last use out of it we can. Alright. Let's start with a small brush. And if we have to work our way up, we'll work our way up because I have 
this halfling slash gnome to start with. <coughs> I think it's supposed to be a halfling, but they're both small critters, so... Where do we got the camera versus where do we got me? Oh, come on, this is going to take two hands to do. Where are we? Whoa! What happened? Okay. face half in here, especially not with the uh, sheer amount of Rudolph I've got going on with my nose thanks to this sinus dealio. Like I keep waking up at weird times like 5 in the morning it's like I have no reason to be up but I, this early. Get some medicine in me, lie back down on the couch, hope for the best. And by the best, I mean, hopefully I fall back asleep. At least for a bit. It's been heck. Like, for the most part it stopped drip dripping, but I still can't breathe out of my nose. So that is not fun. I think I'm going to go with a different color of pants and um, robe. Is that flesh on his arm? Probably. So we need some zombie flesh on his arm. Arms is plural. So I don't think those are his sleeves. I think that's flesh sloughing off. can be leather, the pouch can be leather, Forget said pouch. Just trying to go with nice thin coats so that we can let that wash shadow show through, kind of like with makeup and contouring. Touch up that corner real quick. Let's get down here. Oops, can get the side of it. Yeah, because the necessities of how they do the molds for bones. You don't always get the gaps that you would normally get from the metal miniatures because they're trying to simplify things down to one piece. Slow and steady, slow and steady. Looks like I got a little bit of the shakes going on even though I just ate a couple burritos. It's not like some kind of sugar thing. We just ate. <laughs> Made tacos, what was it, yesterday, day before. And, well, made taco meat. So I've been having a couple of burritos <laughs> here and there. There are two stages of life before you know that you can have dessert for breakfast and that glorious time afterwards. I had 
mint chocolate chip ice cream for breakfast as in I made a milkshake out of it and then ate the rest of it out of the carton while it was fully melting down into a milkshake definitely made my throat feel better temporarily they didn't have the uh, orange dream sickles at uh, Dollar General the other day and I didn't see any other popsicles that uh, were enticing at that moment like some people say that they're not that into sweets and my response to them is I'm a candy for love sweets I'm very particular about my gummies but even being particular about them there are so many that I like if you find those ones with the essentially Lego building blocks gummies those are delicious and they actually do build into Lego vehicles and stuff because it comes with like a couple like lifesaver gummy wheels and stuff no? step at a time oh, what about this um, holster? Oh, no don't know quite how he'd hold an axe like that. Be cutting your freaking femoral artery when you want. Unless this slides around behind him when he bolsters it. And you've sheathed your weapon. Probably could have should have gone with a bigger size brush, Oop. but because I'm getting some brush marks, but that's fine. Uh, let's touch up the. whatever the raised border is on these. The beveling or whatnot. Since the wash didn't get down in there, I'm just going to use this to fill down in there. I'll get that corner. Same thing over here. The more paint I get on them. By them, I mean all of my miniatures, the better. I'm several years overdue on painting a lot of these, so... Alright, I'm going to touch up that just a wee bit. Alright, done by the axe, stick them over here. You can have my axe. Over my cold dead dwarven body! Quiver is kind of hiding under there, but we can get it. Make it pop out just a little bit. And I think that's the strap for it, so we'll just go up to the belt. Belt goes back there. Does go back here. Once again, these are from Reaper Bones 3. The undead set. I don't know if they all come together in the. I'm not saying. Like the word coming to mind is aftermarket, but it's not aftermarket, it's the actual retail market. I'm not sure if you get them all or if they are indeed sold in separate separately or in pairs or anything but yeah there was the halfling the dwarf the elf the minotaur and i think this is supposed to be a trog or a lizard folk if i look 
that up later, I will mention it next time. Kind of what I do with my D&D games, like here's our ruling in the moment so that we can keep the game going. It is partially your job as DM, dungeon master, or game master, or storyteller, or referee, just to keep the story flowing. Part of the concession with that is that players will trust you and don't abuse that trust. But, you know, I'll make my temporary rulings and then I will look it up afterwards. Especially if, you know, we're playing weekly. I've got an entire week to look it up and see what went right, what went wrong. A lot of times the way the dice rolls turned out kind of explained what was going wrong or right with the thing like oh hey technically you're not supposed to be able to use this against that so the fact that you couldn't hit him is because you're not supposed to be able to hit him without this kind of weapon blah 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 so usually works out these guys this guy's got a boot the dwarf does have a boot the halfling is uh Proudly shoeless Joe here. But the dwarf is not. Wonder if there's a market for dwarven made boots because they probably invented steel toes, what with being either miners by trade or living in mines, so either way you're probably going to want to have some foot protection. Hi-ho, hi-ho, I dropped a rock upon my toe, but it's okay because I got steel toes. Okay. Olay, something, something. going on with this boot so we're just gonna cover the whole thing because it's a boot what's this on a boot steel toes from Zappos or composite toes from Zappos I thought they were going with composite toes because of the uh, how steel toes can actually be bad sometimes, but I don't know the uh, veracity of that, but if something smashes your foot just right or wrong, it'll cause the steel toe from the boot to take your toes off. So, I thought they went with composite toes so that it gives you some crush protection without that, but it's no, it's so you don't set off the metal detector. Oh, okay. Metal detector. Well, this is indeed a bracer. Oh, that would be heck. So I'm gonna have to use it. Um, creatures have the uh, items. Well, undead creatures have the items they are wearing in life, and if the necromancer who raised them or whatnot hasn't uh, taken it from them for reasons, like my defenders need it more than I do, so here, you keep these uh, bracers of mage armor. These seem a little too unassuming to be those, but you never know. Yeah, I plugged my cameras back in instead of having them in the hub, which I thought might be the problem. Maybe cameras don't like the hub. No, I plugged them directly into the 
USB ports of the computer and they still didn't come back online so I have to work on that later well, I've got a little bit more RAM a little bit more spell slots some more spoons whatever your analogy is post stroke it's uh, been RAM for me don't have enough RAM to do multiple things at once as much as I'd like to be a multitasker but then I need extra input so I can't be a monotasker it's like I need something else to occupy my mind while I do certain menial routine things way across the hand at least on that wrist somebody oh, I don't think I've watched his videos in a few years maybe I only watched the one maybe I didn't subscribe to him but who was uh, an archer and talking about how at least in some of the earlier Avengers movies Hawkeye had braces on both arms and they were in odd places compared to where you would normally want to have your braces. So apparently either the weird ways they were having him shoot or like they just didn't give him proper technique or whatever he was slapping the heck out of his arms with the bowstring. So he started wearing more braces to try to stop more slaps. Like I said, I am not the expert on that. I just remember watching the video. All right. Let's go up a brush size because I think we've reached that transitional point between the two. So if this one's what a two watt zero, well two slash odd. This one's an actual one, which looks gigantic in comparison. Let's do a dry test to see what it's going to look like on there because I want to do the side of the whoops. Let's get the uh, brush dampened. There we go. Yeah. So I plan on using the side of the brush to get most of this and then use the tip for any fine details. Alright, I think this is the size we're going to use. Let's shake this up some more. And drink some water. Come on. Dale Rowney, round number one. Don't know what all I'm going to do with this shield. So maybe I'll just do the outline in the leather and then. and do whatever either painted color or actually we'll leave that this is some dirt on there and then paint some white off-white over it tabard seems to be coming across the line let's follow this around that way we have one full object done at a time. Going a little thin with the paint to show the shadows through it. Shadow slash dirt. Comes all the way down to there. 
touch up any edges. What have you guys been painting? Or otherwise crafting? Alright, so we've got one boot, as it were. I blocked somebody on my Facebook years ago because of some ideological black hole stuff and specifically why I'm bringing it up is because like I don't go to church, they don't go to church, so it's like, you know, with all that time you're not going to church, maybe you could pick up a hobby, better yourself, what's the point, blah, 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 it's like, so if you want to achieve the very limited goals you have, <laughs> at least the very limited goals you've been telling me in this chat, then maybe you should better yourself to achieve them. And if you want to go get some bodybuilder type person to date, maybe you should, you know, work out at all? Like, you may not want to get full on bodybuilder like the people you keep insisting that you're attracted to. Who could break you like a twig? But, at least be in shape and not your present uh, doughy self but, you know pick up some kind of hobby something to stop obsessing over things so there's a tear in the boot on the right leg so we're just going to leave that white to be the bone showing through. Thank you for coming to my vague talk. Ah, well, hi. Good landing. Push that knee up. Alright, let's get the cheese. The other side. Yeah, so my nose is not dripping, but I can't freaking breathe through it right now. So I have to mouth breathe here. I'm 
enjoying this number one brush for this. It's says holding that strap. The other one is just in the arm. Or the arm is in it, I should say. Go down to the connecting point. a shower before starting the stream, had me some, a couple burritos, so I'm feeling slightly more myself than I was, but partially it's the placebo effect, <laughs> got the medicine in me, so either the placebo effect or the medicine starting to kick in a little bit to partially, temporarily abate my symptoms. This, uh, like I said, I woke up at 5 this morning. I think I went back to actual bed at like 9 this morning after calling off work because uh, it's not happening. I need paid, but I can't get to work if I can't breathe and I can't turn my nose off and I'm still feverish and contagious. Apparently, this was going around work last week or so. Like, oh, thanks. So I happen to get the manager who works with us cooks. I'm like, I think you made me sick because when I called off yesterday, I'd asked if any of the cooks had been sick when she mentioned that it had been going around work. And she's like, oh, none of them. Oh, well, maybe Craig because that's why he was off. Like, oh, so I got him on the phone today. I'm like, hey, I think you made me sick. Like, oh. So he knows exactly what I'm going through. Uh, hate calling off. Hate not being at work. <laughs> I've got this uh, problem with being a workaholic. This work-life balance thing. Because I either work like three jobs or no jobs. There's like no in-between. Like I was working pizza delivery. Oh, hi Arthur. Oh, buddy. Too bad the kitty cam's not working down there. He just crawled into the box. Hi. Cat cam. Yeah, that's where I want you, buddy. I want you in proximity. Yeah. I mean, if that's where you want to be, I'm happy that you're there, buddy. So I can't to sleep on the uh, gaming table that all I've managed to do is play Magic on right now. Uh, the players are asking what I want to eat for game night and it's like I don't know if I can make it to game night because I have been sick. Okay, we'll play it by ear. Okay, good, because, yeah. Like I could probably maybe run it from here. <laughs> But I don't think I can go there to run it. Because I am in some dire straits. So pull me up as a uh, virtual dungeon master. And even though I have your player character uh, models here. But I mean, I don't care. You can use some sorry gaming pawns represent yourself red, blue, yellow, green since there are four of you although some of you have multiple characters just in case oh, I can throw slightly bigger threads at you that's why I also started you at level 3 because level 1 characters are just so squishy so very very squishy Like there's a starter adventure in the back of the 3.5 Eberron guide that's, you know, for level 1 characters. Here you go. Like, okay. And then it's got Horrid Rats, which Horrid is a template you put over top of Dire, but they've already done the work for us. But a Horrid creature has all the uh, advantages of being a Dire creature. And then 
It has more armor and disease and spikes and stuff. So these little challenge rating one rats have a armor class of 20. Good luck. Like if you're starting character with a little bit of a strength bonus, okay, maybe you can hit it, or dex bonus in case of ranged weapons. And then if you're like a fighter or anything else that starts with a base attack bonus. And maybe if you, with my 500 gold piece, so you want to be an adventurer, House Kunderak loan. If you got a plus one masterwork weapon, then maybe you've got more than just a 1 in 20 chance to hit these things. Now the only character that I've ever not extended that loan to was a druid because like why would the druid need it? They've forsworn all this stuff. It's not about poverty, but like, well, I can't use this. I can't use that. I make my own stuff. You city folk are weak. But that's fine because one of the now NPCs, former player character, was playing a dwarf and I extended to her an even larger loan because she was a member of House Kundrak so and she took favorite in house so like they know she's got the house's best interest at heart so she's supervising the ragtag group But it's still a loan, although hers might not have compound interest like everybody else's, if she's favored in house. I don't know if there's any mature way or non-offensive way to or at least less offensive way to portray the sentiment that the negative sentiments that some characters might have about the banking guild I was watching a video earlier and they kept mentioning Henry Ford and his uh, treatise against the human world banking guild that the World War II Germans thought was such a good piece of work and they held it in such a high esteem that it was only number two to their leader's book. But you would think with how xenophobic most races are in Dungeons and Dragons that that could be an issue. Even if absolutely everybody in your game was the same race, if one clan of people, one nation was holding all the monetary value in the world. In some secret cabal. In public, but secret. Yeah. The fancy as heck. Is this gator people? Oh, it's a whole gator people temple. Huh. Mayan style. Here's a bar room blitz. We've got Golan back here and long shot here. There's our guide. There's Lurk. Some humans running around. Some pharaoh, at least one pig person. I think that's supposed to be another one. Another human. 
but makes great art for a painting guide. There she is again. Yeah, I'm glad they all got marked down to 75% when I went to Jack JAC Games that day because while I did crack it open that night, I haven't actually really done anything with it until, what was it, this week, last week, when I got the uh, models airbrushed with a base coat. A very dark Higgins inky base coat. But I like some of the stuff they've got in their Game Master screen. Injury table, roll 3d6 three to, three to determine the injuries. On a 3, they're destroyed, they're just dead. 4, critical injuries, slow recovery, 5, broken limb, roll another d6, a 1 to 3, they broke their arm, 4 to 6, they broke their leg, incapacity, spend a feet point to act during their turn, lose one quick action in addition to penalties for the lost aspects, 6 through 8 is spitting blood, grievously injured and incapacitated, spend a feet point to act, loses a quick action and penalties. Nine, they're battered until they recover all lost vitality points, minus two fizz and speed in addition to penalties. Ten to eleven concussed, and then they have like what these conditions mean. Battle scars, minus one on social skills if it would frighten or disgust the subject. Character gains plus one on intimidation rolls against anyone who can see the scars. 13 to 15, spitting blood, see above. 16, lose an eye, concussed and loses a randomly determined eye. Permanently suffers minus one on ranged attack and sight based perception rolls. 18, they lose a limb, slow recovery. Roll another d6, they lose an arm, one quick action each turn. 4 to 6, lose a leg, minus two speed, maximum speeds reduced by two. And then what concussion, grievous, slow injury, disabled, incapacitated. So these are the kind of uh, critical hit table. Like this is a pretty gritty, quick and easy version of it compared to some of the ones I've seen for Dungeons and Dragons. So I'll probably end up instituting this stuff. I may or may not mention it to the players first. Like. Besides, with all the healing magic, it shouldn't be a big deal. It's like, oh, okay, so now this is what's going on. Oh, that might be his, uh, well, uh, what's its name? It's like Fist or something because it's a hand that got locked off and regenerated into a whelp because that's what uh, certain trolls do. I don't know if it's just the pygmies or if it's all true trolls or if it's all troll kin or what, but I think they're interesting. I just didn't want to go with blue for this guy like everybody else. I didn't want to go with a green gator. Go with a croc. Speaking of which, I was doing a word search earlier and it was on Australian animals, Australian animals, and one of them was salty, which is a saltwater crocodile. And those suckers grow up to like 20 feet long, with some examples growing even longer. Upwards of 3,000 pounds. Yeah, not something I want to mess with. It's a hyper carnivorous apex predator that often takes out other apex predators like yay fun it'll eat you and it'll eat the thing that was trying to eat you depending on how hungry it is maybe it'll you know kill it first and then come after you when you least expect it well, speaking of which with uh, long shot there the gator men you have to keep them perpetually sated with food, otherwise they take some kind of penalty. Long shot kind of reminds me of my Shadowrun troll 
Technomancer because I wanted to have a character that would live long enough to do the Technomancy stuff instead of just being a squishy. So I went with a whichever variant of troll that was albino and looks more human-like instead of having whatever troll pigmentation and um, I'll say disfigurement but their knobby facial traits compared to human traits like elves can typically disguise themselves if they need to because it's just a matter of oh let me hide my ears anyone can have aquiline features with sharp jaw lines and stuff we can all look like anime characters but trolls tend to have like bumps and osteoderms and stuff so it's the kind that doesn't have the osteoderms so they look more like a human at least you know on a vid screen or something if you're just looking at the face I'm not seeing this seven to nine foot tall behemoth but with as many mods as people can get in Shadowrun it's possible bone lacing and body replacements basically cyberpunk yeah I like the Shadowrun world I don't necessarily like the Shadowrun system no matter who has run it for me and I've played in like a handful of different people's games you're just too damn squishy and there's only so much you can do about that you have to survive your adventures to get enough creds to beef up your character with any of the uh, aftermarket modifications but even then like a gun does this much damage and that's just your bare bones basic equivalent of like a nine mil that people would have now even though it's you know the stronger future version but it's the lowest tier gun besides like a holdout pistol and it's gonna wreck you and even if you have Doc Wagon to come stitch you up every time, like, good luck. So I'd much rather use the D20 Modern system and actually gain levels, but play in the Shadowrun world. Well, that's the other thing. If you save your Karma, your experience points, you can use those to not be dead so it's kind of like that uh, pirate game rule where you have 1d4 plus 1 extra lives except for you, you can't spend your XP like you'd want to you've got to save at least one so that you can have it on hand when you go to not die in a combat you're supposed to be stealthy. Yeah, we tried that. Someone blows one roll. Now an entire squad of security forces come in and... mess something up in the uh, cryogenic uh, preservation chambers of whatever monsters you're supposed to either retrieve or eliminate wake up and get their weapons and stealth suits on and yeah you're just pwned like hey we're on your side we think then you end up with the uh, Independence Day kind of scenario with no peace, only death. Can there be peace between us? No peace, only death. So he's using the poor scientist as a puppet. <laughs> I 
been a while since I've watched the first one. I still haven't seen the sequel. But can't remember if it was Brent Spiner, a scientist that got used as a puppet. We don't get a lot of visitors down here. I think I've seen part of the first one in the years since it came out. I saw it in theater. Chris C. Mac took us all to see it on, what was it, July 2nd that year? Because the movie actually goes July 2nd, dun dun dun. And the uh, Goldstone Center out in Port Irwin, Barstow, California is where they pick up the signal from the approaching alien ships. I later ended up stationed out there and got to see them. Should have tried to see about getting some kind of tour of the facility while I was there. Like, hey, uh, do you have like a civilian tour or anything, military tour? I do have a secret clearance at that point. Can I just, you know, get a closer look at these things? Get a first-hand account of what y'all do out here instead of the uh, default thing that the Observer Controller told us. That's where they talk to aliens. Like, okay, about that. On the note of aliens, a few years ago I was trying to get through my Zundoku pile. The Japanese word for all that pile of books you have that you'll never get through reading. And yet you keep buying more. I haven't been buying more for the most part, but I have been getting more from the little library projects. Take a book, give a book. I'm trying to explain that to somebody once. I'm like, oh, people just steal it in my neighborhood. Like, that's kind of the point. They're supposed to take the books and hopefully leave some books. And you become a friend of a library for like five bucks a year you can get those books they're about to toss after the uh, annual book sale and you can spread the love around communities oh okay certain books can change lives put a bunch of Nirvana CDs Beatles CDs and stuff in one of those out in Wadsworth last summer or so across the street from a buddy's house but I was trying to go through my Sundoku pile and I read Battlefield Earth which the movie is hilarious. Like, I don't know what people were expecting from it, but it's sci-fi. It's not necessarily supposed to be some sweeping epic. Especially not that one, but you know. I'm reading Battlefield Earth, and if you've seen the movie, the climax of the movie is about page 350 in the book. And then we have like another 750 pages to go of denouement where we're wrapping up loose ends. But there are loose ends that weren't even introduced <laughs> in the story. So we're essentially adding another novel to the book about these other aliens that show up going hey you guys are the ones responsible for XYZ uh, so what if we are well in that case then you'd have to face us or negotiate with us or some nonsense but it's 700 pages of such nonsense before we even confirm oh hey that thing you did and that we've left kind of ambiguous you're actually successful. Like, wait, what? Yep, you did the thing. And why didn't we just come out and say that and end the book?
Like, there's no reason to uh, do that. I don't know if his publisher didn't think they should uh, start a whole separate series of books, make it a sequel or whatnot, and just consolidate it into one big book or what. Or that that was Herbert's idea, or if he was in the m middle of starting Scientology and just didn't have the time to write it as a separate book or what, but it was just not. And I'd warned a buddy, like, hey, I'm about to read this book. Uh, if I come out as a Scientologist, uh, snap me out of it. But I don't believe I've come out as one. Well, that's exactly what a Scientologist would say, isn't it? Isaac Hayes of South Park was a Scientologist. He left the show because they dissed on Scientology. But what they did to diss on Scientology... Oops, that's actually skeleton. What they did to diss on Scientology was to tell us what they actually really believe. Like, this is straight up in the book. This is what they tell us. This is what we believe and practice and thetans and alien planes and volcanoes and all that stuff. It's like, you know South Park already made fun of Scientology much worse in season two with the Blaniacs episode and Jesus and the super best friends in which they also showed an image of the Prophet Muhammad praise be unto him but he was hanging out with Jesus as part of the super best friends to stop David Blaine and his Scientology proxy powers so that later episode like are they gonna show him? which was a response to the Charlie Hebdo assault in Paris where extremists killed some people over controversial representational art of said prophet thing is like with any other religious prohibitions the prohibition is against you as a follower to not create any such representational art it's not against non-believers for creating representational art it's for you to abstain from XYZ it's not for other people to maintain your diet essentially hey you're the one on the diet I can eat all the ice cream I want you're the one that doesn't eat certain things for religious or other reasons or even allergies like I'll abstain from eating it around you but you can't dictate what I do when I'm not around you, and I'm just doing it out of courtesy here. So. But it's like they already did that. And this isn't even like digging into somebody's past tweets. It's like this is part of their library of stuff. This is canonical. It's not just some stupid tweet. They put thought into this. They paid somebody to animate this. But since they own the rights to Chef's voice and the clips that already existed, they uh, made the Vader version of him want to make love to the children. I think there's something wrong with Chef.
let these guys dry. Still got plenty of water, but let's get some more ice while we're at it. Gonna do that. Take a quick little bathroom break. Hi, hey, Arthur. I'd love to show you on the cat cam, but it's not working. Is it? I don't think it is. Oh, hey. Well, that one's up and running now. Where's the other one? Where'd the other one go? No. Nope. Didn't want the face cam per se, which is cocked to the side like a puppy dog right now. Where's the other one? That's that one. Subtract that one. That's number two. Yes, remove. Add. Video capture device. Add existing number two. Huh. Let's try to turn this on with my foot so we don't freak out Arthur. Hey, buddy. So cute down here. Oops. Why is it not? Yeah, I can't get the cat cam to work. Cause he's looking so cute down here. Hi buddy, can I come down there with you? Let's try to troubleshoot this while he's down there. Can I come down here with you? Can I? Can I pet your belly? Can I pet the white fur? Can I pet the white fur? Hold on, buddy. I'm not trying to spook you. I'm not trying to spook you. Let's try this a different way. Um, if you get vertigo really easily, uh, turn away now. Oh, it's okay, buddy. It's okay, Linda. Hey, back up. Let's try to put the camera on. Hey, hey, hey. Let's try to put the paparazzi on. Yeah. There you go, buddy. Oh, come on. Is it not? Hold on. Hold on. Hey, you there? Can you back down, buddy? Hi. You're going to be internet famous, aren't you? Hi, gamer kitty. Oh. You want some drugs? You want some catnip? You want some catnip? There you go. I'm not in a good spot. Sorry, buddy. I'm trying to get the camera to get your good side. Who am I kidding? All sides are his good side. All right. Well, I'll be back. Get some ice. finally started using my TARDIS and Dalek ice tray. You get three Daleks, three TARDISes. skeleton while I'm thinking about it. I have a pretty good idea where it is. Hi Dr. Michael, watch out. You can go get some drugs if you want.
Oh, well, they weren't kidding about the shoes showing up today. I decided to check my door for that. Not sure what this little thing is. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. Well, I found a coping saw and a hydra, some snapping turtles that I think I got from Core Device. Another one of these Spectors I think I got from Rogue Sculpts. Zombie Fighter. Can't remember her name. But it was the $5 or $10, something minimal for crowdfunding a gaming convention however many years ago. So they'd send you that if you didn't want to attend.
Alright, well I didn't find what I was looking for. I'll have to look for it later. Like I said, the shoes did arrive for work. Also arrived an eviction notice. Fun. We don't accept partial payments. We do apply a late fee, but then we automatically hand you a freaking eviction notice. Like, really? There's a late fee for a reason. Let me send out a message in a bottle real quick. But I did find this fringe Usum. I'm not that familiar with this kind of character from Star Wars, but I put some primer on him years ago to add him to my D20 Modern game. Who is this guy finally not tacky? Oh good. I don't know what that purple fuzzy was, but... Okay, so Reaper Bones, I'm not sure if he's ever been part of any of the Kickstarters, but I believe it's from Chronoscope, but it's got like a minigun and a power fist it looks like. I had intended on painting him to look like, huh, I don't, I don't get how he's black paint but then also the metallic paint. Because I thought I did only one color for him when I primed him with a rattle can. Even though you're not supposed to use it for bones. It said it was for plastic, so I thought, what the heck. And it had been tacky for years, but he appears to be fine now. But I thought I only did him in one solid color. I don't remember you know, adding the metallic color. Or if I had started with the metallic color, adding the black. I think it's the other way, the former. But from Reaper Miniatures 2013 but I'm going to paint him is it Cygor Kilgore in Spawn universe up until last summer when I sold mine he's a freaking yay big box of a model so Spawn who's like somewhere between like a short Barbie doll basically a tall He-Man, short Barbie doll for a typical Spawn figure, but I was also hoping to find the rest of this Gator Man from Reaper because I was trying to magnetize the head and neck, but something messed up somewhere. So I wanted to fix that, but I didn't find that when I was looking. Did find this Hydra. I have my glue available right now my proxy for it's a reaper angel of some sort I was using as a proxy for Karis from Malifaux and the not Cthulhu from Reaper that also was going to magnetize him I think I have it again in uh, bones somewhere I know they made it again and here's the actual metal baby juju that comes with the avatar Zoraida from Reaper Bones made a meme of her meth not even once because if you look at her avatar she's young and gorgeous and then you look at other versions of her and she's a strung out old crone let's send this message out
message sent.
YouTube if it hasn't shut down. Alright. Yeah, so I did all that and that apparently caused nature to give me a phone call. Alright, so hopefully you've skipped ahead or muted or whatever. You're plugged in, you're doing your thing, you're connected. Let's take a short break to check out our new kicks. All the other kids with the pumped up kicks, you better run, better run, outrun my gun. Join us now at zappos.com slash VIP. Shipping is always free both ways, oh my. We're open 24-7. Facebook 65 returns. And they're actually Reebok. One day one safety sublight 2.0. With the credit they give at work, this cost me a whopping $3.20. I could have gone with the ones that didn't have the blue bottom on them. But then I would have had leftover on my balance and that would have just gone into nowhere land so might as well get the ones that I want that kind of cool I don't care if everybody else is wearing them there or not oh yeah here's the uh, little memory tech insole advertisement taggy thing let's take that off they're actually made by Reebok <laughs> I haven't had a pair of Reeboks in years. Squishy! Alright, well, I need to break them in anyway, so let's put them on and. Official standard for shifty toe protective footwear in the US. Composite toe, non metallic, rigid polymer protective toe cap. Lightweight. Does not conduct heat, cold, or electric. XTR brand composite toe cap. Electrical hazard protection. Slip resistant, metal free. Ideal for jobs that require working around sensitive metal detectors. Maybe we should get some metal detectors that aren't so sensitive. Composite toe, color black, upper microfiber mesh, lining, moisture wicking, nylon mesh, insole, memory tech, removable, outsole, sublight, EVA cushion, midsole with SR tread, rubber, heel, and four foot pads. Special features 100% non metallic, wide toe, extremely lightweight, and flexible. Important safety info. Any impact or compression to the toe may cause the safety toe cap to crack. Immediately replace footwear if this should occur. And if it's damaged or cracked, it may not meet the standard and will not protect your foot. Yikes. <laughs> Scary thought. Alright. Let's get these sub light kicks on. Took that shower, got some fresh. Jeans, fresh socks and everything else. So let's wear these around for the next little bit. See how comfy they are. Ooh. So it depends on the brand of shoe. These did say they were true fit and I don't think they lied. They're ten and a half. I'm ten and a half as far as the shoe size goes. Ooh, this memory tech. Massage soul feels kind of good. <laughs> it's been a couple of years since I bought some new shoes. 
the ones that I've been wearing for the restaurant work are to, ooh, these are nice, are getting kind of uh, dirty from the chicken powder, the breading, some nice breading, but I don't want to uh, deep fry my shoes. It seems to only be one shoe, like my left shoe is just getting coated, but that's when, if I'm on the, uh, pull the chicken and JoJo's out of the tumbler side, that's the side that's closest to the tumbler, so things are spilling on it. It's also the side where we're scooping the breading out of the long, tall boxes in their little rolling bin. Uh oh, where did my video go? Uh oh. Where did my video go? Huh. Oh, nine hours ago. Well, hi, uh, Prophet Hassan. Where's me? Are we still alive? Oh, it is still alive. Good. little bumps on there for the uh, massage feel kind of nice it's like a reverse uh, divot from a golf ball Where did you go? And what do we want to do with the reapers and stuff I like this one I want to make All right, so I'm gonna use oh hey I'm going to use this one from Reaper Bones 3 as kind of a test run for this Pathfinder Battles Grim Reaper from WizKids. Go with that blue black kind of thing. I think I'm going to go with this. Oops, where do you go? Incubi Darkness again. And then give it some darker highlights of like purple or something to make it black. Stick to this one number one round because of the size of this and because we want to get all up in there. Although I might want to try to go with some OSL. Whoops, but that still requires uh, getting the base color on there. Or does it? Because if it's right over top of this uh, wraith bone, it might look like it's glowing better. I don't know. And let's just go straight incubi darkness. Incubi in the sky! So there's, you know, Incubi and Succubi. Is there like an NBI or something? Some kind of neutral? Incubi? An actual by Incubi? Something? To represent other uh, spirits of the night that are uh, trying to fulfill the old fantasy. in there. Probably should have gone with some kind of wash, but get some nice coating on there. It's got the hint of fingers. Yeah, I'm going to probably end up using this as an alip, at least sometimes. Wraith, Spectre, whatnot, but I'm going for the madness of an alip. Yeah. I didn't think they were going to be as dangerous as they are, at least not against the characters that were in the party at the time, but 
they dropped our Warforged Cleric of the Sovereign Host to no wisdom, so he just... Doom. Robot shut down now. It's like it put its soul or animating force or what have you to sleep, and it took... They never went back and got him, did they? <laughs> like the wizard reincarnated because he wanted to charge in with a dagger against some human barbarian ruffians <laughs> because he didn't want to waste any spell slots but <laughs> it was just ridiculous yeah they had to like hawk some other stuff to get enough money for a bargain basement druid NPC druid uh reincarnation using the Eberron specific reincarnation table which I had also modified to give the option of reincarnating as a warforged assuming there was a warforged nearby that was without a soul at the time or otherwise inert because there's that docent composite uh, docent component that allows one warforged to basically back up its brain on a hard drive kind of situation like playing a synthetic in other games like d20 modern uh, gamma world so gamma world 3e well 4 3e it's gamma world like 60 or something but on the 3.0 3.5 system but you can have one personality in there at a time and you can just keep flipping back and forth between the two like hey this is my ranger this is my rogue or this is my fighter this is my wizard kind of situation I know there's some stipulations on that but since that's an available option it's like okay then you could possibly reincarnate into his body and he could possibly try to kick you out of his body or you guys could fight over the body which would be fun I like the idea of the uh, possibilities there. It's an already existing option. It's not even something I pulled out of my fourth point of contact. You know, military folks, airborne personnel. But he didn't. He rolled halfling. Like this chart has shifters and warforged because I put them on there but shifters and changeling and Kalishtar even somehow even though they already have traces of a quarry spirit I can't remember which specific flavor of quarry they are quarry Barberton has a park that is Tuscora Park next to the hospital I keep meaning to take a picture of it and send it to Keith Baker, like, hey, um, what do I do about the uh, Tuscora here? They seem to be inhabiting the hospital and the park nearby. Ah! Hi! So, as is, I like it. <laughs> Definitely gonna do some highlighting, low lighting, whatnot on there, but I like. Spooky, spooky. Like, I don't know who or what the park is named after. Because it's not on Tuscararis proper or anything. And, you know, Tuscararis and Tuscora. Are, I don't know if it's supposed to be like a denonym for the Tuscararan peoples or what have you. Since a lot of Ohio things are named after our current or former indigenous populations and a lot of people here of Caucasian uh, ancestry claim to have various levels of Native American in them and it's like but 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 it's like dude I know you I know your family you didn't just suddenly and this was before things like 23andMe ancestry.com like I know you don't have. Like, why are you suddenly claiming that you do just to be cool? 
I'm part Native American. Since when, man? Since when? Last year you're saying you're in a this ethnicity or that one. You ain't got a lie to kick it. Alright, I really need to get this guy on a better base though, because he doesn't like to stand up. Get him over here by that bottle. And maybe I just have to touch up the hood and stuff later. comfy, at least while sitting. This one also doesn't have a face, however this one's got the skeletal face. This one also has like some midriff showing. Weird. And the arms don't seem to be skeletal, so... Not sure what we're going to do with that one, but this one let's get... Where'd you go? Some skeleton hoard for the bone. Oops, we don't really need to shake contrast. Oops, come on. And this is why I use this to try to keep it open. Like this is one I've used for wash before, but I have a smaller one for wash. So I want to get into the details. But while we're doing that, we can also maybe go wash on this chest. If my fingertips can get the uh, baggie open. This one is still straight up clay, but it might be enough to go straight from the clay to that instead of having to moisten the bristles. Yeah. As long as we go careful, we should. <laughs> Who am I kidding? But as long as we go careful, I'll probably go with more of a tattered tan or gray for these robes. Oops, up before we actually got into the paint. Um, I need something to hold that because I am going to be absolutely covered with it if I don't. This does not open wide enough. Oh, barely opens wide enough. But down into all the grooves, all the cracks, all the nuts. Ah! All the crannies. Where's this there? That took all of it off of that side. Come on. The water doesn't turn the clay back into clay. I don't know if this was an air dry or if this was baked. If it was baked, we should be good. I think this was from Anthony of uh, Rogue Sculpts. I haven't talked to him in a few years. Loved some of his work. Some. <laughs> like I said, I haven't talked to him, haven't kept up on his work. I don't know if I'm still following him or if the algorithm just kind of dropped him off my thing. Thank you, algorithm. I didn't want to watch the thing that I forgot about. Thanks a lot. Because I forgot about it because the algorithm. Soak in there. All right. oh, close enough. Alright. Let's set you right here. Put that down in there. All these skeletons down at their feet. Stones. 
just spread it thin across the uh, tattered robes. Let's go to the view with, not that one, there we go. Capillary reaction, whip some of that out of there. This side goes like right up against the head. Bone scythe! Bone scythe is ready. Loving that capillary action. Just suck it out of there and move the excess where we want it. Just gonna cover the whole darn everything. Make sure we get more in the eyes and teeth these. Some more down here though. Did we even Okay anyway? Oh hi. Get out of there and drop it into the. Alright. Well, that's good enough for now for that guy. Let's go ahead and do the same trick to this one. Where's my forceps though? Still haven't gotten back to this brain. Brain. So let's clamp back there. Mm. I could stop running, but the sinus infection itself seems to have gotten worse because, yeah, a lot more gross going on when I do blow it, so not pleasant. And I still can't really breathe out of my nose. I don't know if I sound extra nasally right now because of it. No. Feeling not quite short on breath, just harder to breathe. Since I pretty much have to force myself to think about breathing through my mouth, because it's not coming in and out of my nose, it's just stop, stop, like I have nose plugs in. Since I've got this one in the forceps, I can spin it over and get the other side. Can't breathe. If breathing was that, uh, is without you. And by you, I mean my nose. I needs it. Oops. It's all run to the front, which is cool, but not necessarily where I wanted it. But let's leave it be. Hmm? Stay, stay, stay. There we go. I need your love, I need your touch. Do, 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 do. I don't know the original, I'm only vaguely familiar with the Pentatonix version. I did get to see them live at EJ Thomas Hall, thanks to Jeff, a local musician, organist, pianist. 
is a fun uh, night. DJ Thomas Hall. It's where uh, our graduations used to be conducted at Springfield High School. I'm not sure if they still do it there or if they just do it at their own freaking uh, tiny auditorium. Because, like, I like some of the ideas of the new auditorium. You can, as a student, or if they have uh, other performers like some of the other schools in the area, lease out their space to other theater companies and stuff, but you can go from the band rooms or the choir room or like the drama room straight down the hallway to the backstage area so you can, you know, run way back there, do a full costume change and then run back and if you need wheelchair access, then you can just go in that way. But then they added one of those wheelchair lifts on the other end of the actual stage, which means there's one set of stairs up and then no set of stairs down. And if somebody needs wheelchair access, it's going to take forever in the event of emergency to ever try to use that elevator thing and just take them straight out the back. And there are less seats than there were in the old auditorium. And yet you have grades 7 through 12 sharing a building now. And I will assume they only have the one auditorium because they use that. They have, you know, the one set of band instructors and choir instructors and acting coach or whatever there. So you have less fine arts teachers you have to pay for, possibly have to pay them more. I wasn't sure what Springfield's salaries were like for teachers until one of them got busted for, not the band people, just a teacher in general. I believe he was only social studies, but he got busted for embezzling from the treasury of the uh, teachers union. I don't know if they have a separate union or what, but, oh yeah, he, uh, allegedly took something like $24,000. Another person, I think also from her school district, one of the, uh, sports boosters treasurer got busted for... I think another 24,000. Why is that the amount? But um, Got to give it to local Fox News for this. They uh, tried to interview her and she drove off in her brand new Camaro. Like, so new it still had temp tags on it. Like, oh, that's some serious shade, Fox. Thank you. Yeah, we tried to ask her some questions and she drove off in her brand new Camaro. <laughs> like, Ooh, we've got some splaining to do, lady. Somehow, the other teacher, since he lived in another township, that police department was supposed to deal with this case. It's like, but the crime was committed here. Why are we not the ones dealing with his crime, his alleged crime? Here, but whatever. All right. I don't know if I have any lawyer friends in the audience. Just have a public defender acquaintance, if not friend, fellow quiz master. Ooh subbed at each other's venues a few times. Uh, his venue used to have great turnout. 12 teams, average of 4 members each. And then they switched the night. <sighs> Not only did they switch the night, they switched it from Tuesday night. You know, when, what else I gotta do? Let's go to trivia. Let's go check out a pub quiz. And get 
whatever level of prizes they had at the time, whatever level of uh, prize support with the bar tab, they switched it to Saturday brunch, basically, like noon to two or whatever. And that could have worked if it, you know, were better organized. But like, oh, this Saturday's an art crawl, and this Saturday's this, and this Saturday's First Friday kind of leftover events and all this stuff. So nobody was coming in to stay in until well after quiz was over. So you could have come in and got a Bloody Mary that was a meal because it came with like a full pickle or at least a full pickle spear and I think eggs, bacon, stuff all on the skewers. Like, ah, this uh, margarita is a meal. Ah! Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh good, we didn't get too many fuzzies on there. There's like one I see there. Alright, well. <sighs> no harm, no foul. I made a pun the other day at work, no harm, no foul, about our chicken. Like, we drop something but it never made it to the floor or anything it just kind of fell right there in between us and we managed to half catch it before it dropped so it's like well it never left our positive control we just had to juggle it but party foul that or he actually dropped one and we had to throw it away either way it was party foul let's get the uh pliers involved. This broken st statue. We had a few hacky sack moments last week at work. Oh, some fun people there. At least in the kitchen. I can't vouch for the rest of them. Since they're just kind of, you know, there. Because we're back in the chicken coop. Doing the chicken and JoJo's. And then we can talk to the uh, boxers a little bit, but the other ones are like all on the other side of the kitchen, or up at the deli counter, or you know, when I was back in the uh, sink area, you know, like people have to walk by, but <laughs> no time to talk, no time to get to know each other, even out in the smoke area or in the break area. like. I'm going on break, they're coming off break, or vice versa. Like, hey, <laughs> hanging in there. Let's talk about the weather. I don't think I have my mana core with me. But Let's grab this leg since it's actually attached to him. This one and this one are sold separately. can't remember the name of that song, but I believe it's on one of those tiny German labels that Voltaire references in Alchemy Mondays. Monday, time for alchemy on Bowery behind the gallery coming in and see a band from Norway or Japan. Pick up the CD while you're able somewhere on a tiny German label. Which at the time he was on that tiny German label, Project with a K. I had a goth sampler CD that talk about life changing. Like, hey, this is music that speaks to me. He's been uh, crowdfunding albums sometime since then. If you don't know who Voltaire is, he used to do station identification claymations for MTV, that weird dragon thing. Wonderfully weird. And lived in New York City with like no power, just candles for a year or three, something like that. But he's also the evil meteor from out of the sky on Billy and Mandy. He's, uh, had the song When You're Evil has been sampled over a lot of, was it AMV, AMVs or whatever? 
like for bastard and stuff. I used to communicate with him via MySpace, but he doesn't talk to anyone via Instagram. He did his uh, Paint It Black Guide to Gothic Housekeeping as a sequel to his What Is Goth book. And at the time I owned at least one, if not three hearses, because I've owned a total of three concurrently. And in there they turn a North Carolina PT Cruiser into a pseudo hearse, which it's fine if you're using a shorter casket and you uh, fold those seats down. I know an HHR can hold approximately 64 cases of MREs, like half a pallet of them. That was my rental car in Fort McGuire, Lindhurst, Dix, New Jersey, when I was on White Cell for my PSYOP unit. But we needed to transport things, and we didn't have a 15-pack van yet. Sometime after that, they're like, oh, let's get a 15-pack. Like, yeah, let's, I guess. I mean, I've been having fun driving this thing, but yeah, let's get the 15-pack van. I'll drive that, I guess. And like, I didn't necessarily have the license for it. And although I did have bus drivers training, active duty army. Although I didn't get certified because the... Uh, instructor taught us one way and the grader was grading us a totally different way like the way things are on Fort Irwin California the stop signs back here to give you a warning that the stop line is up here like sometimes like 30 feet away like an entire bus length away so he had us use the stop sign as a place to start slowing down and then we would stop there. Same thing with like stopping for stops uh, for actual bus stops on post. But like stop at the stop line, stop at the first crosswalk line, double check, and then go. Because you're already kind of in the way if anyone needs to turn. You've got a much bigger vehicle going on here. But nope, she wanted us to stop at the sign, stop at the line, stop at the first crosswalk line, stop at the second crosswalk line, look every step and then go and it's like uh you're giving me more time for somebody to sneak into the way and get ran over and then never ever back up without a ground guide but you're the army so you're not allowed to back up without a ground guide anyway okay cool what she wants to do back up into a dark shady dock at the back of the hospital with no ground guide like excuse me there's no backup cam the mirrors aren't helping because it's so dark back there I can't see any part of the boss much less the dock but you just don't seem comfortable with this so I'm not going to approve you that is fine lady that is fine I'd rather not have to drive three hours south to Pendleton or whatever it was that the other guy unfortunately got stuck doing but it was only two of us in the training so it was fun to do the training the instructor would be like, okay, so this is my Mercedes, this is my Jaguar, and he had the cones set up for us to parallel park a bus. <laughs> yeah, parallel park a bus. The, what was it, like, Wednesday, Thursday, he had us driving off post. Yeah, the other dude drive us down the one side of Fort Irwin Road straight to Barstow Station and then had me drive us back on the highway and then the next day I drove us down the other side of Fort Irwin Road and he drove us back on the highway. So with only two of us in the class, we got lots of hands-on training. When we went to Barstow Station, I got a gigantic breakfast burrito from Tom's next door, at least at the time it was next door to Barstow Station. I don't think it was in the station proper like the P.F. Chang's and stuff were. Just getting the uh, base of the base of that.
don't know what colors I want to do for the Sphinx, so I'm going to leave her alone. I don't know what colors I'm going on for that, or him. Don't have any paint on the turtle yet. My flavor saver mustache here has got some water in it. All right. Anything else I want to get the wash on? I don't think there is. Not this wash, anyway. The shoes are noticeable that they are indeed shoes and they are on my feet, but they're not heavy at all. They're even with a composite toe cap and stuff, which is barely noticeable in there. I have to like push my toes up against it to kind of feel it. Not sure how well that allows for bending the foot, but they're medium high top or whatever, so. Maybe they'll give me some ankle support and maybe I won't be in as dire of pain. Maybe I'll wear it tomorrow to go to an appointment. If I can get an appointment. I am physically and financially hurting here. Like I said, when I got the uh, shoes from the door, I also got a pre-eviction notice from my door, like, yay, thanks, you already tacked on the $75 late fee, can't, like, oh, hey, we're going to evict you now, like, <laughs> you're already charging me extra, that's kind of the point, sorry, uh. drink some water, Not known oil. Draken Hof Nightshade. It's kind of bluish. It might work for this Reaper. Bluish purplish. Do I have something else I can use at all? I want a model for testing. Doxies or whatever strumpets from the townsfolk. This one was a pseudo Cassandra for Malifo for me. Oh, hey, this one was uh, Buster's character as an NPC. Oh, hey, I've got another undead here. Need some paint love. He's the uh, mounted rider for one of the undead steeds I have around here. Just a farmer and his. Ho. Woman and her baby and her child. This is for my 2008 line of painting. Made. Let's get him out and about. Get some paint on him at some point. Ow, ow, ow. Put him with these other. Uh, Wizards and such. What time is it? 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I shouldn't take any medicine for at least another hour. Uh, my head is killing me. A test model. I don't want all my uh, townsfolk to be wearing purple. Nothing wrong with purple, but I already used it on so many of them. Ah, here's a strumpets pack. Yeah, so she may or may not be a strumpet, but there's the madam and a couple other women trying to entice us for their wares. It is the oldest profession after all. Sex work is work. 
still trying to wrap my head around it. I'm not being sarcastic. It's just, yeah, I have a lot of stuff to unlearn. All right. Uh, let's put them back in here so they don't get uh, splashes of other colors on them. Although, since she's already wearing purple, let's make those petticoats. Actually, let's make her slip or whatnot with this color. Gonna need a new paper towel after this, probably. Alright, drink some water first. something like this because it is uh, definitely way too much uh, wash on here. Let's try to hold two minis at once. I don't see how that could go bad at all. side without getting on our skin. Apply action. Let's hit Wick some of this away. Get it in there on her petticoats or slip or what have you. I only know a few things about fashion. Like, hey, your purse and your belt and your boots should match because if you'd made it yourself, they'd be the same strip of leather. That makes sense. That's practical. Fashion is passion, there's no true meaning to it. So, right here is the seam, the mold line, I'm pretty sure. So it gives us a nice spot for the pigment to rest in. One of these, probably her, is going to take the role of, uh, what's her face, D. Kneith in a series of adventures, a series of the modules. Yeah, it's like night and day. I already put some on this side, so I guess we can't just go half these, but consider it. Whip that out of there, get some more on the slip, maybe. Come on. Ah, it's getting on my hand. Getting on my hand. Put this on her dress a little bit. Put this up on the chest and shoulders and whatnot. Yeah, currently a lot of these models just have the white eyes going on. So I haven't gotten around to touching them up yet. Because there's a few ways to do eyes. You can just paint everything flush and then drop the eyes in after the fact. Or you can paint the eyes over the flesh as like a band or just draw the band and then paint the flesh around it. If that makes sense. 
depending on how steady your hand and stuff like that. And how detailed you want the eyes to be, considering just how much detail do you see of somebody's eye from however many feet away anyway in real life. Or even like say watching a movie, like unless they zoom in on their eyes, how much detail do you see? So paint the whites of their eyes, maybe maybe do like an iris that doubles as your pupil, but you're probably not gonna see iris and pupil separately. Side note, I've met someone who has no iris. Worked with her briefly. Yeah, she has to wear some special glasses because with filtering and whatever on there because there's no iris to it's essentially like always dilated pupils for her because there's no iris to contract, no iris to filter, it's just straight up pupil. Kind of looks like a Bejoran on their black eyes from Star Trek, at least when we get to next gen with Deanna Troy. A.K.A. Demona from uh, Disney's Gargoyles. It's weird that Star Trek is Paramount, but all of them reunited for Disney's Gargoyles. Well, most of them. You got Janeway. You got Riker, Demona. Well, Riker, Troy. I don't think Jordy was on there. Brent Spiner had quite a few roles on there because he was the basis for Owen, Sanatos' helper, and his fairy side, Puck. Come on, get off of there. I'm trying to erase it from the leg. I'm trying. Failing. the paint enough that it's starting to spread onto the petticoats, so I think we're good. It is pretty boss. And I say this as someone who's not necessarily a Bieber fan. Porter likes him, or at least liked him a few years back when we were playing in a band together, so I showed him the video. Is it too late now to say sorry? Cause I'm missing more than your body. Is it too late now to say sorry? Like I don't know what the uh, immigration policies are like for Iceland, but the exchange rate seems to be, or at least when I looked it up when he was selling his house, when Leo Marocci and his then wife were selling their house, it was however many kroner and it was only like 18,000 for this really 18,000 US this really nice house and his recording studio shed and all this stuff it's like save up some money and move to Iceland I had a Facebook buddy who went there on vacation pre-pandemic and he said that he totally would have moved there except for how they uh, quarantine your pets and he couldn't be without his pet for that many days or weeks or months it's like, eh, I feel ya I mean, I'll come visit okay. so that's nightshades, the one I used there where'd the other one go? not known oil Where's the other? Didn't I bring it over here? I'm sure I did. 
Oh, I did not. Violet. Violet more violent. So I should use one for one and the other for the other. Okay, this guy's got some serious mold line between the legs, but not really going to see that when he's riding his undead mount, so he can just wait. Popping my shoulders here. Ugh. I don't know if Vin Diesel actually dislocated his shoulders on pitch black or if that was just a filming trick, but either way, owie. Some Sears school level stuff. Escape and evade. Let's start with the broccoli base. If we don't like it, then we can uh, decide against putting it on the model. It's a larger model, though, so we can totally get by with that brush again. So, you know, those are death. This is big death. Maybe find a different language word for big death. Because, like, Paper towel. Ooh. So we I did this as just a test run for the base, but I do like how it looks on there. I'm thinking I might try to do some kind of OSL of the glowing phantom coming towards you. So brighten up the uh, base. Let's start at the top and work our way down. Lick some up, take it everywhere. This seems to be a little bit more manageable of a shade than the violet from Vallejo was, for how I was treating it anyway. Your mileage may surely vary. Yeah, seems to be less glossy, more washy. All those models over there that could use some paint and love and whatnot. Uh, my sinuses. glowing or what and I can't quite remember how the death that appears from the deck of many things which I do have my own if I can find my dungeon master dice bag I'm pretty sure it's there along with a set of dice cards from a crowdfunding campaign but the deck of many things, instead of having to use a tarot deck or a standard playing card deck stripped down like it's a euchre deck or something, or maybe a reverse euchre deck, depending on how you want to look at that. Um, but I have it, and you know, you can take out a random number of cards because you know the deck of many things may or may not be complete when you find it. Because you may have found it because somebody else just died from it. But back to the actual tangent. <laughs> like, I don't remember what the stats are like on the death. Like, if it's 
your own uh, stats as a character, if it's a whatever level specter, what have you. If somebody else tries to intervene though, they'll have to fight their own death. If you lose, you'd be dead. I think your soul gets trapped on another plane and resurrection magic won't work. You actually have to physically travel there and get their soul back from whatever demons guarding it. I might be conflating this with a separate card. Uh, did reread it a few weeks ago. Like, oh yeah. It was fun. I was involved in a discussion on one of the D&D groups on Facebook about Deck of Many Things. I hadn't read some of the caveats for some of the cards. Like, hey, if you draw this one, your character pretty much goes comatose or dies or something along those lines and you stop drawing cards. Well, I ignored that because I didn't know about it. So after I read it, I'm like, well, we'll just go with what happened for my example here. But it's funny, I watched a Critical Role um, Battle Royale and Grog pulls out his deck of many things, which somebody had sent him one. I don't know if it's the same one from the Kickstarter, but somebody had sent the group one of those. And Matt Mercer pulled some of the cards out. I'm not sure if he did it randomly or if he selectively did it for the Battle Royale, but he pulled a few of the cards that I had rolled for the uh, Characters that I was using for my example. Ah, hi, stay. Oh, hi. <laughs> Alright, I kind of like how it is so far. I'll definitely give it some highlights and such later after it is thoroughly dry. Kind of liking how dark these dresses are getting with the other, the uh, Drakken Hoff Nightshade. So that I was going to say proprietary, but custom purple, because I think I mixed it from actual blue for them and for the mushroom people and such. Let's get some more water and wash this off our hands. So we should be wearing gloves. still broadcasting or not? I see the uh, spinning wheel on my phone. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Where are we at? Midnight and 2.45 on this. These things need to dry anyway. I think I'm going to end the stream. I don't know if I'll be back with another one tonight or tomorrow. I mean, I'm sure I'll do one tomorrow, but I mean, I don't know if I'm going to do one tonight in between. I'm going to mess with the camera after I turn this off, but I'm going to dump this water first so we don't have any accidents. Uh, stop streaming.